So you're clapping for me. In deaf culture, we wave our hands like this. That's better. Thank you very much. So now I'm going to smile. So when I went to school, I went to the Cabra School in Dublin. I was boarder there. So when I arrived, really, we were taught through oralism, which was through speech and lip reading. And we weren't allowed to use sign language at all in the school. So really, if you use sign, it was banned, and you were punished for that. It was seen as a bad language. So when you went into class, the teachers used lip reading, so we had to lip read them. And I was lost. I couldn't follow them. And I was, get, I was falling behind in class. So did I do my leave insert? No. And I left school. I didn't bother doing my leave insert. When I think about going to college, I was too scared because I thought I would fail at that as well. But at the same time, I think if I went to college and I go to the library and get a book out to do my research, it's all in English. And I'm not able to follow the English. It's too much for me. It's overwhelming. So going back to the oralism in school and being taught through, it started back in 83, 1983. And then it was signed before that, and then it changed to this oralism method with speech and lip reading. And they said, this was better for, the, for deaf people to join the hearing world. So. Really, I failed my intercert, and then I left after that, and I didn't think I'd be able to pass my leaving cert because it was all through English, and I couldn't follow it. So in colleges, they do supply interpreters, but not all the time. And this is because of funding. So for example, you know, if you went to France, and you went to college, and you learned, and then you went to the library, and the books were all in French. So it's a little bit similar to that for me, and I'm not able to follow the language. So I started adult education by the Galway Roscommon Education Training Board. And it was through community education training. And we got on very well there. I learned what? I learned cooking. I learned computers. Um, what else did I do? Oh, I did budget management. But sometimes they'd give me some papers, and there'd be a big stack of them. And I'd just leave them to one side. It was through English. It was too much English for me, and I just got overwhelmed by this. And of course, we had interpreters there, and the interpreters were brilliant, and we understood everything. But then we went her home, and we kind of said, Oh, what was that? And we kind of go back and read through the English. It was too hard for me. We, like, we have lots of loads, but I want it in more simple, plain English. So through my training, I got on well. Our group, it was a fully deaf group. And we know each other very well. We knew each other since we were small. We went to school together and everything. So what we found was a little bit difficult was the traveling. Because a lot of us, you know, we live far away from each other. So, and with the weather, between maybe the bus, maybe there's a bus strike or train strike, you know, it would be difficult for some people to get to the training center. So some of them weren't very, didn't feel very confident about coming to back to education because of the English barrier. So for example, the cooking class, we were given a recipe. But they said, you know, there'd be a little bit of a mix-up. So for example, I was doing organizational skills about how to become a committee and how to set up a committee and be a chairperson, because I'm involved with the women's deaf group. So how to set up meetings and run meetings. And I really enjoyed that class, but that class was mixed with hearing people. So really, that's all I have to say. So thank you very much. I hope that was all right. Yeah, <laughs> thanks.